morning our special is going to be brought to us by Dwayne and Linda.
Amen. I tell you what, I'm kind of glad I don't have a special this morning to follow that. Amen. Uh, I tell you what, uh, let's give them a, amen, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We know all reverence go to God, but I tell you what, I feel like God was involved in that. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord for that. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Uh, Oh, a man that, uh, over in uh, Kentucky that sings that song, and uh, me and my wife, I really love hearing him sing it too, so it was a real blessing uh, to hear that song this morning. Uh, how's everybody doing? Blessed. Blessed. Amen. It's good to be here this morning, and I tell you what, it's humbling uh, that God would give me another opportunity to stand uh, this morning. Uh, he's laid something on my heart. He gave it to me Thursday. Uh, on my day off, I was on the lawnmower and uh, just talking to the Lord, and uh, I tell you what, uh, uh, Lord talks back to me. What about y'all? Y'all hear the voice of the Lord? I want to thank Him for that. I do. I really do. I want to thank Him for that today. But, you know, I was uh, kind of talking to him about uh, the ministry and uh, uh, God leading me over here, you know, uh, back in uh, December of last year and uh, being here now, going on six months. Uh, can you believe that? Uh, I can't believe that, but I got to talking to him about the, uh, the coronavirus and how it's kind of, uh, you know, split the church up and people are scattered and uh, went this way and that way. And I was like, God, you know, I, I just want it to all come back together. Uh, you know, will you give me some of those uh, uh, people please? sermons. Uh, that's what I need because that's what we need to bring the church back. Is that right? Is that right? All right. Uh, you know, but that, that's what I was thinking. I was like, God, there's no time to be uh, uh, running people off or, you know, or preaching hellfire. No time for that. God, I need some, something that's going to fill the church. Kept talking to him, talking to him, and he got silent. And I was like, well, what's going on, Lord? You know, I always hear your voice, but I'm asking for people, please. So I kept talking and talking and talking. And I finally heard that sweet little voice says, You preach my word. And I'll worry about who comes to church and who don't. <laughs> I'll worry about how many's there, how many's not. I want to go back to Jeremiah this morning in the sixth chapter this morning to Jeremiah. Before we get into God's word, we're going to read 16 through 21. I want to talk a little bit about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was what they call a weeping prophet. Know what that is? It's somebody that preaches and never gets much response. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, you know, uh, sometimes I, I feel like that in my life. No, I'm not no Jeremiah, you know, but, uh, but I guess I could be. You know, I've, I've done a little preaching in the last years, and I pray God will allow me to uh, continue to preach His Word. But lots of times I, I haven't got a lot of response. But, you know, we're not to judge that. You know, the response is in the heart of people, uh, wherever they may be, uh, wherever God was to sprout, whatever I sow. We're just kind of uh, seed sowers, I guess you would say. But Jeremiah, according to the world back then, he was not a successful preacher. And to the world's eye, he, uh, he really didn't accomplish a whole lot. Because nobody really responded to the things he said. He might not have drawn big crowds. Might not have been very popular. He sure didn't get rich preaching the gospel. Got a lot of that going on in the world today. No judge. But according to God, he was most successful in preaching the gospel. Because he was telling people the truth. He was telling the people of Judah, hey, the world's full of sin. And until people repent from their sins and get back to God, like our song said this morning, bad things are going to happen. Do y'all feel in y'all's hearts today that America is on God's road? That's what he gave me today. Are you on God's road? Do y'all feel like our world is on God's road, yay or nay? Do y'all feel like America is on God's road? Can we make the world get on God's road? Can we make America get on God's road? But can we as an individual choose to be on God's road? We can, can't we? We can you know, the Bible teaches that we got to be in this world, but we don't have to be a part of it. 
It's like that. Uh, my wife kind of uh, told me what that little lizard was. A chameleon, is that it? Uh, we talked about that last Sunday night a little bit. A, a chameleon, you know, whatever it's on, uh, in a little time, it'll look just like it. If you put it on that leaf, it'll look like that leaf. If you put it on that ground, give it a minute or two, it'll look like that ground. And the church itself is starting to look just like the world. Well, that's what everybody else is doing. It must be okay. Well, though they voted that law in, so that must be all right to do. Y'all, we live in a world of sin. We live in a world of things that are going wrong. We live in a world of where everything is going against God. But instead of standing up for what is right, we're starting to blend in with all of it and say, well, okay, it's the norm. But are that what we do as God's children? Jeremiah said, no. If they listen or if they don't, I'm going to preach what God has on my heart. If you'd stand with me in Jeremiah chapter 6, starting with verse 16 this morning, I'd like to read down to verse 21. The Bible says in verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good ways, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I said, Watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling box before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them, and the neighbor and his friend shall perish. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the reading of your word this morning. Father, we realize your word is the bread of life. But Father, we realize, God, that you need to anoint your word today, God. Father, and humble our hearts, God, that we may be receptive of the message you have for us. As a church today, God, as, as an individual, Father, we ask you, Lord, as you've laid this subject on our heart, are we on your road? Father, there are two roads of life. Father, the road to destruction, God, and the road to peace. Father, I pray today, Lord, as we all leave here today, God, we can also say it's been good to be in your house, but we all leave here on the right road this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. God, we just ask you to bless it today and have mercy on us all. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated this morning. Are you on God's road? Are you on God's road today? You know, we may say, well, you know, Brother Johnny, I asked Jesus to uh, come into my heart and save my soul and, and take me to heaven someday when I take my last breath. I went down there and I got my, my life in church through Jesus. And now I'm going to go out here and I'm going to uh, live my life the way I want to live it. I'm going to fit right in with everything and uh, that way I won't raise no commotion. I want to be like everybody else. Are we on the right path if we're doing those things? No, we're not on the right path. The Bible says that we are to be a peculiar people. The Bible says friends with the world, enemies to God. Thus saith the word of God. That's what it says. Friends with the world, enemies to God. No, is that a popular sermon in today's world? No, not looking for popularity, church. I'm looking to please my Savior, to tell him that we do live, tell y'all that we do live in a world of sin. You know, what is the world's way, the world's road? You know, it's, a, it's hatred, it's greed, it's selfishness, it's more money. Amen. How many of y'all be happy if you had more money? More money makes everybody happy. Bigger my bank account, the happier I am. Man, yeah, let me tell you something. If I won the lottery, I'd probably be in a good mood. I really would. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Most of us would. Praise the Lord. I, I won the lottery. Then when I realized I had to give most of it back to God, I still better be happy, right? Are you on God's road? 
The world's road is uh, selfishness, like I said, and greed and hatred and people running over each other all the time, just trying to beat each other up, trying to get ahead. But what is God's road? God's road is love and joy and peace, contentment, forgiveness. Friends, family, church, caring more about somebody else than we do ourselves. Well, there's not a lot of that in our world today, is it? It's I'm going to beat you up, I'm going to take you out. No matter what i got to do to get ahead, I'm going to do it. That's the world we live in. That's the, that's the road that the world has out for us. Jeremiah says here in verse number 16, Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. That's what Jeremiah is asking the people to do. Stand here a minute, just look. Look around at their world today. Turn on channel 6 for a few moments. Don't stay there too long because you'll get mad. <laughs> or scared. Or stressed out. But stand ye, he says, look. Look at the world. Can't you see that it's all against God? Can't you see? Like the lady said on the song, we got to give this world back to God. Now we don't have the authority to give the world back to God, but we got our own personal life. We can give it back to God, can't we? And the world cannot stop us from that. But it says there, and see and ask for the old past. Ask for the old past. The old way of life. You know, me and my wife, I got off yesterday about 1 o'clock, and I was tired, and, you know, we knew we had a big day today, and I come home, and, I, you know, I told him at work, I said, I'm going home today, putting on something comfy, I'm getting in my recliner, and I ain't moving. And let me tell you something, I did that too. I did that too. Found a couple of shows there we watched, and let me tell you something, if it's not, uh, if it's not killing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if it's not cussing, if it's not sex, if it's not all this stuff on TV, it's not a very popular show. It's not a very popular show. And that's what you mostly find. Not much more Little House on the Prairie and, and Walton's Mountain, praise the Lord. Hey, everybody like Walton's Mountain? Praise God. When we was growing up, we called it Dalton's Mountain. I don't know why, but, but anyway, I guess that's because our last name and we just kind of like the sound of it. Little House on the Prairie, Walton's Mountain. How about the Dukes of Hazards? Praise God. Just don't look at Daisy. Hey, you know, hallelujah. But anyway... The old paths of life. People used to sit at the table when they eat their food. It was family time. Praise God. I don't know about y'all, but I'm as guilty as all. Get out, get your food, and go wherever. Anybody in here do that? You ain't got to say amen. I'm not trying to set nobody out. But what about those things? What about family prayer? Do we have that anymore? Prayer in school. Some of them are trying to get back to that. The world is going against God. But we don't have to go with it. Reading on there it says, uh, Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Do y'all feel like that's the same people today as there was back there in Jeremiah's day? The world we live in? Yeah. Oh, we know that's what the Bible says, but we're not going to do it. That's not very profitable to me. Well, it's kind of like me. You know, I, I want to come over here today and be, have a people-pleasing thing where everybody just comes and listens to the people-pleasing stuff, but I can't do that and preach God's Word. I must come and tell you what the Bible says. And I believe the Bible is saying out of Jeremiah back in the Old Testament exactly what's going on in our world today. The reason the world is like it is because it's full of sin. It's full of sin. And I believe we owe God a little respect for the Word of God that it's still alive and it's still well. And it can still be preached in the world we live today. We forget about all the lives that's been given, all the lives that are still standing right now, that we can be free to worship God in spirit and truth and say that the world is against God and full of sin. We owe Him praise, don't we? But I believe in my heart. I fall short. Where I work falls short. Our nation falls short. 
And I believe a lot of the things that are going on are because we are going against God. The Bible says in verse 17, Also I set watchmen over you. Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. I was talking to an old, uh, older preacher this week at work, and he said, Brother Johnny, I believe Gabriel's up there shining the trumpet. Y'all believe that? <laughs> you know, I got to thinking about it. And I thought, boy, you know, you're right on track with that. Uh, old Gabriel up there shining that thing. He's fixing to blow it. What's going to happen? We saved or we not? We going home? No matter so left behind. Anybody ever watch Left Behind? You know, I, I'm not fit to be left behind. <laughs> I'm going to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to make my election sure today. If I'm laying my head on my pillow at night, scared to death, if I'm going to go to heaven, if I don't wake up, I'm going to ask Jesus to save me again. Save me again. If I'm not comfortable with my baptism, I'm going to say, hey, somebody baptize me again. If I feel like I need to be a member of a church, I'm going to become a member of a church. Praise God. And we love all y'all and invite y'all to come here. We eat every Wednesday night. Hallelujah. And we're going to preach the gospel the way the Bible says it. Because that's the way he's called us to do it. And the moment I start falling in to some of this trap, I know we got some good old strong elders here. They're going to take me out back and skin my head if I ain't preaching the gospel. Because that's the way it's supposed to be. The world is full of sin. But we don't have to fit in. We still need to be standing up and preaching, standing up and saying to our families, standing up and saying out there at work the way it's supposed to be. They may say that's legal, but let me tell you something, the Bible says it's not. So many things in our world today. Verse number 18, Therefore hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O, hear, hear, o earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. And even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Rejected it. Verse 20 says, To what purpose comest there to me incense from Sheba? Jeremiah starts getting into this, and uh, God was telling him, and he's telling him to tell the people, you know, uh, we can come to church all day long. We can go through the motions. We can go to work tomorrow and say, I went to church. I've done what I was supposed to do. But God knows where our heart is, right? If our worship service, if our, if our desire to be with God isn't from our heart, the Bible tells us it's a bunch of religious racket. How many of y'all believe a religious racket is going on in our world today? Boy, sure I'm getting a lot of amens when I start talking about how bad this world is. Praise God. Are we on the same page today? I believe this world's going to hell in a hay basket. What about y'all? I don't believe some of our, uh, our, our politicians up there, I don't even know if they believe in Jesus Christ. I'm just going to sit there and say it. But what do we do? We run them down. Most of us do. We need to be praying for them, don't we? We need to be praying for them. That's exactly what we need to be doing. I believe that with all my heart. We live in a world of creed and selfishness and hatred that's against God, that's not on God's road. Jeremiah is telling the people, hey, look around, can't you see? Can't you see what's going on? We're wondering why this is happening, why this is happening. Because we need to give our lives back to God and need to pray for our nation. Read on, it says, To what purpose comest there to me incense from Sheba? And the sweet cane from a far country, your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your fat sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling box before this people, and the father and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friends shall perish. Notice them words there, I will lay stumbling blocks. That's tough, isn't it? You know, I've heard people say that uh, uh, the coronavirus was from the devil. Look, coronavirus was from God. You know, they're back and forth about all this. Let me tell you something. The devil can't do nothing unless God allows him to. I believe that with all my heart. And I believe with a little bit of my heart there that God could have used that to throw a stumbling block to the church to see, to see how strong we are. And I want to wave at everybody in here and I want you to do it today because we need each other. We need each other's strength, don't we? This is a test for God's people. But as I look around today, I know I'm not the one to say, but praise God we're here. 
Maybe we're passing the test. Amen. Stumbling blocks. I believe that. It's my desire today. It's my desire today to know God better. What about y'all? It's my desire today, seeing the world the way it is, that I may get to know and have a little more knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, because I don't believe this old world's got it right. I believe this old world's going in the opposite direction. I believe it's on the world's road. And I want to get back on God's road, don't you? I got a grandbaby coming. <laughs> and I, I want to be on God's road. You know, I know I'm young. I'm, I'm 48. I, I'm young compared to some, but, you know. But think about it. I got a lot of life to live. I want to live it for God. You know, some of my family already know me, and they know my past, know how mean I've been. I got a brand new grandbaby coming. She won't know nothing about those things. Praise God, I can start right now. She'll only know what she knows. So I can leave a godly legacy for her. The rest of the family may say, he used to be mean than a snake. And I did. My wife says I still am. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother, I'm just hanging in there. Amen. I, I am in defense, they say. Amen. Praise the Lord. Trying to defend myself. Are you on God's road today? Friends with the world is enemies to God. Are you friends with this old world? Do you like the things that are, you see on TV? God, I'm guilty on some of that. Do you like some of our crazy stuff we got going on? Do you get more fired up at work talking about Jesus? Or talking about what President Trump's doing? Think about it. Don't we hear more politics going on at work than we do Jesus? Golly, Bill. Don't we hear more politics on TV or the media than we do Jesus? Isn't it all about Jesus? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. I believe this same message that Jeremiah was preaching back many years ago uh, stands strong today. I believe the world itself needs to get back on God's road. And it was kind of ironic that y'all played that song, Give the World Back to God. We can't make the world go back to God. I can't make the nation go back to God. But I can be sure I'm on the right road today. I can be sure I'm leading my family in the right direction. I can be sure that I'm up here trying to preach what the Bible says to preach. That there's a hell and there's a heaven. And if you're sitting there today, you should know where you're going to spend eternity. I'm thankful today to know that I got Jesus in my heart. And no matter what happens in this world, brother and sister, <laughs> it ain't going to affect my eternity. You know, my eternity is going to be the same. I'm going to go up here and it's all going to be good. No pain, no suffering, no sorrow, no death. Hey, man, ain't going to be nobody greedy, nobody selfish, nobody thinking they're better than me. I ain't going to be trying to have the nicest truck in the neighborhood like I do now, you know. Praise God. I'm not going to be sitting down here thinking my John Deere tractor is better than Brother Kenneth's, hey, man, you know, because his is orange. All this stuff ain't going to matter. The only thing that's going to matter is that we made it to heaven. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing that's going to matter. And we're going to be praising God for that. Because I don't believe, I believe we're going to know we're there. Because we're going to be praising our Savior, Jesus Christ. Y'all, we need to wake up. And we need to realize the devil is good at what he does. And he's building a world. And he's sucking God's people into it. Starting to fit right in. Jeremiah says, out of context, you know, I don't believe y'all are right with God. And I believe that's what's wrong with the world. But I stand before you today. 
And I say, I don't believe the world is right with God. And I believe a lot of the things that are wrong are because we are rejecting God's laws. I'm not no expert. I'm not no doctor. I sure ain't, praise God. I'm just a redneck that knows what's right and wrong in my heart. You know? I know it's wrong to be greedy. I know it's wrong to uh, take from others. I know it's wrong to, uh, to be selfish. I know it's wrong to be prideful. I know I'm a man. All these things are against God's laws. We want to make them right. You can't make them right. We got to go with God's laws. Are you on God's road today? If you turn to Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4, chapter 14, I'd like to turn over there for just a few moments. Hebrews 4, chapter 14, are you on God's road this morning? You know, uh, think about that for a moment to let that kind of suffer in your spirit. Uh, you say, well, I'm at church. I'm on God's road. Praise the Lord. You know, hey, that's a start, isn't it? <laughs> that's a start. It sure is. It sure is. And I'm thankful that y'all are all here today. I'm thankful God allowed me to get here. Somebody said this morning, I'm just thankful God allowed me to be able to be here today. Isn't that something? God allowed me to be able to be here today. But how many of y'all have things in your heart and in your mind that nobody knows about? Nobody knows about. Not even the person sitting beside you knows about. And you're not going to let it out. One of those little hidden secrets that you got in there. Something you're just not at peace in your heart about. The Bible says here in verse 14, chapter 4 of Hebrews, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know, verse 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched the feeling of our infirmities. What does that tell me? That God knows you. That Jesus Christ knows exactly what you feel in your heart. He knows how hard life is. He knows how tough temptation can be. He knows. He knows you and He loves you. He knows what you failed at the last week and He still loves you. Praise the Lord. And He wants to give you peace. He wants to help you in a time of need. Don't y'all feel our world's in need? I feel our church is in need. I sure do. I don't think you can never have enough Spirit of God in church, right? I don't. I don't believe. I don't think we'll ever be perfect with God. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think Mount Arab will always fall short of the glory of God. And I stand behind this sacred desk and say that. But I guarantee you all those men that stood before me would say the same thing. We will not be the perfect bride of Christ until God comes back and makes us that way. But we are to be striving to be in that situation. And the moment we think we have nothing to pray for, living in this world that we live in, is the moment we are friends with this world. And the Bible says, if you're friends with this world, you're an enemy to God. If you're on God's road today, you have a desire in your heart right now. If you're on God's road today, you have a hunger in your heart right now to know Him better. If you're on God's road today, you want Him to help you forgive that person that you've been mad at for so many years. If you're on God's road today, you want to ask that person to forgive you 
that you need to ask forgiveness from. If you're on God's road today, you have a desire in your heart for somebody that's lost to be saved. If you're on God's road today, that alcoholic down the road that you know, you need to be praying for him. If you're on God's road today, that family member that you're worried about, you should pray for him. If you're on God's road today, you have a desire to know Jesus better. If you're on God's road today, you have a desire for everyone to know Jesus better. If you're on God's road today, you have a desire to be a better follower of Jesus Christ. Is anybody in here on God's road today? If you're on God's road today, you haven't given up on praying for our nation. If you're on God's road today, if you're on God's road today, are you on God's road today? Don't let the world fool you. Jeremiah said the world is against God. But he stayed on God's road. Regardless, he stayed there. Where are you at this morning? Are you on God's road? Do you have something you need to talk to him about today? I remember praying many times in my life, and I probably still will. God, replant that desire in my heart to want to know you more. God, replant that desire in my heart. Talk about you more. God, replant that desire in my heart to read your word. God, replant that desire in my heart to learn a brand new song. God, replant that desire in my heart to come to church. God, replant that desire in my heart to sell somebody I love. I love them. God, replant that desire in my heart to go around in a lost and dying world and talk about Jesus Christ and how He saved your soul, forgiven you of your sins, how you're going to live eternity someday with Him and all your loved ones. If we're on God's road, we have those desires. Don't let the devil feel fool you and do you tear you off? We should have a desire in our heart to be with Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humble our hearts before you today. We thank you, God, for the message that you've sent us this morning, Lord. And God, it comes out of Jeremiah in the Old Testament today. God, where the world and Judah was against you and rejecting your rules and your laws. And nobody was really paying attention to Jeremiah, God. Uh, they just, he just preached and preached and nobody ever hindered to the Spirit. But, Father, we pray today, God, Father, if it be thy will, Lord, that we'll examine our hearts this morning, Father, and, and ask ourselves, are we really on your road? Are we really having these desires in our heart, God? Father, we pray, Lord, if your spirit speaks to us as an individual, God, we will heed to that spirit. Father, your word says, when all my people humble and repent themselves and come to me and pray that you will heal their lands. Father, we just pray today, Lord, that we will be prayer warriors for you this morning. God, have your will and way. Father, if there's one in our midst today, God, who's not sure of their salvation, Father, I pray today, Jesus, be glorified. For it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. We all stand this morning. Mr. Dolores comes. Are you on God's road? I tell you what, I, I like that title there that he gave me. and uh, uh, you know, But he just didn't give it to me. He gave it to you. Think about that for a moment. Uh, it's not my sermon. It's, it's God's sermon. Uh, are you on God's road? If you're on God's road, uh, you should have some of these desires in your heart. Where do you stand?